great cutie pies. It may be Good Friday in the UK, but it is Great Friday in Ireland. Selling alcohol on Easter Friday has been banned there for almost a century, but no more. Gone are the days of exploiting the loopholes on trains and ferries. Our Emerald Chums can now join us in toasting the bank holiday down the pub instead. So cheers to that. I'm Shazza Carpenter serving up 12 rounds of cold, fresh quizzery. And this, of course, is HQ Trivia, where being a clever clogs could make you better off. Now, the rules to play are simple. I'm going to ask you a series of questions ranging from easy to hard. You have 10 seconds to tap the answer. If you get it correct, you move on. On, answer all 12 right and you win or you split the big bucks. That's right. Now, today's prize is a barrel filling 550 pounds. That will let you finally shout out drinks are on me or even secure the next 550 goes on the pool table. But you've got to make the money before you spend it, honey. So let's get this quiz rolling with Q1. Which of these is not a national language on earth? English, Vulcan, Spanish. Not a national language on this planet. English, Vulcan, or Spanish. I don't know what planet you are on if you chose English, but I do know you aren't winning any money tonight. Star Trek speak, it's Vulcan, of course. Not an Earth language, 56,551 if you have that Vulcan grip. Vulcan may be the official language of nerds, but we live long and prosper across all nations. Q2, when an argument is settled, the quarreling parties are said to bury what? The hatchet, the Easter eggs, Barry's berries. What do you bury? After an argument, hopefully, the argument would have stopped before it began if both parties had started an egg hunt. Hardly the most peaceful sounding resolution is burying the hatchet, and hopefully not in somebody's leg or something like that. 55,000 and 90 of you resolved that one well. Now this phrase most likely comes from Native American tribes who literally buried a hatchet to end hostilities. Okay, I have a very important reminder for you HQTs. This Sunday's prize is our biggest ever. A whopping eight thousand pounds eight g's that's right so invite a friend to get those crucial extra lives to help you win the dosh 3 p.m on sunday do not miss that back to the cues which celebrity's life story published when they were 27 is called me life story so far so good lorraine kelly alan carr scarlett moffitt me life story most of us have to get off the sofa to make something of ourselves, but not this lass. Couch potatoing her way to stardom. Scarlet Muffet for the win. And 23,725 of you couch surfers got that correct. That was quite a brutal question right there. Scarlett shot to fame on Gogglebox and went on to be the first armchair critic to be crowned Queen of the Jungle. Yes, she did. Q4, Pickaboo was an early name of which app? Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat. Pickaboo, an early name of which of these apps? These cool apps that we all know and love. It's a game you play with babies, so it's no surprise it's the youngest of these apps. Still making faces disappear after a few seconds, it's Snapchat. It used to be called Pickaboo. That was the early name. 15,850 of you still have your faces in the game. Snapchat's founders had to drop Pickaboo because they discovered another business had already snapped it up. That's right. Q5, what was the name of the 2017 Love Island Sunday catch-up program after sun, heartburn, heat stroke? Sounds like my last trip to Barbados right there. What was the name of it? The show has received a lot of flack. Caroline Flack, that is, presenting the sunny main shows as well as the Sunday catch-up. She'll have needed plenty of after sun. That's what it's called. After sun, 14,654 of you sunning yourselves. Now, if that wasn't enough island loving for you, there was also the weekly hot list on Saturdays. 
Now, it's shout out time, everyone. I want to say hi to Sophie and the Hatton clan who are playing right now, to Ryan and his mom. Hello to Lynn, Graham, and Hugh. Camille is thinking of you all. Hello pro to Progress in Swansea and to Ross Strachan as well. Good luck to all of your players in the game. Q6, which of these countries does not completely surround another country? Italy, Brazil, South Africa. Doesn't completely surround another country. Which of these countries indeed? Come out with your hands up. We have you surrounded. The only country here that can't say that is Brasilia. Brazil for the win. And that was quite a savage question right there. That was quite a savage question. 4,485 of you made it through that one. There are three enclaved countries in the world. San Marino and Vatican City are both inside Italy. The other, Lesotho, is surrounded by South Africa. Q7. In the 1830s, which of these things was frowned upon by the publication Family Monitor? Reading in bed, French bread, singing out of church. In the 1830s, it was around back then. What was it frowned upon? What did it frown upon? Based on Christian values, it would have caught many of its readers red-handed, banning bedtime stories. It's reading in bed. No, they didn't approve of reading in bed. 1,502 of you read that one right. That frown got upside down, though, because modern research has found that reading in bed improves your sleep. So take that 1830s mumbo-jumbo. Q8, who's ready? What cost 10 shillings when it was first introduced in 1922? Radio license, driving license, passports. Cost 10 shillings back in 1922. What do you think it was? They'll all get you moving, but which one cost half a pound back in 1922? Sounds cheap now, but made quite the racket at the time. Radio license would have cost you 10 shillings. 500 off you got that right. I'm going to go with a savage question right there. The least amount of you tapped on the right answer. Just 500 players left here on Q8. Driving licenses were introduced in 1904, while the earliest use of the word passport was during medieval times, way back when. Q9, which of these movies was not scored by Ennio Morricone? Goodfellas, The Thing, The Untouchables. It was not scored by Morricone. Which of these films right here? Having composed the music for over 400 films, finding something Ennio hadn't scored was a slug in itself. A bunch of wise guys doing bad things is Goodfellas. He did not score that movie. An absolutely savage question again. Sausages, bacon, all that stuff. 89 of you got Goodfellas. Good for you. Now, Ennio has been nominated for six BAFTAs, winning every single one of them. Now, there's a fella who's good. And 89 of you are good, too. All right, more shout-outs. Let's do this. We have the Crusaders Rugby. We have Eleanor, Millwall, Sam, Jamie, and Charlotte as well. How are you guys doing in the game right now? Let us know in the chat. Q10, after the Lake District, what's the largest national park in England? Yorkshire Dales, the Broads, Peak District. The largest national park in England. Which one of these three? Three huge national parks, but which one is the hugest? At least 2,100 square kilometers bigger than your local park. It's the Yorkshire Dales. That's what we're talking about here. Yorkshire Dales, 54. If you got that correct, sizable win for you there. England seems pretty proud of the Lake District, but it's only half the size of Scotland's mighty Cangorms. Q11, are you ready for this one? Which of these organizations was founded first? Warsaw Pact, World Bank, League of Nations. Founded first. Which of these organizations? 
these real world Avengers assembled in 1920 to make sure nothing like the First World War ever happened again, disbanded after failing to stop the sequel. It was the League of Nations. That's the answer we're looking for. And 34, if you got that correct, keep it together, guys, because we are moving on to the final round. 500 pounds up for grabs. We have 34 players still standing strong. Who is going to take home the cash? We're about to find out. Q12, which theatrical character's query prompts the reply, we are all born mad, some remain so. Vladimir, Estrogen, Lucky. We are all born mad, some remain so. This line comes from Samuel Beckett's seminal play, Waiting for Godot. Lucky isn't lucky here, as he is mute for most of the story. Estrogen may have spoken the words, but we are looking for who prompted his reply, which means Vladimir for the winner. We have seven winners, my lovelies. <laughs> Smashing, smashing game. Congratulations to our seven winners. You are each taking home 78 pounds and 57 P. We've got Wheelie Bin looking cool there in his Abbey and Mary Frosty with a red baseball cap right there. We've got the chalk. I know what you're about to drink tonight to celebrate. Vicky Master and three more of your 78 pounds, 57 pence. What are you gonna do with that cash? You could buy a hatchet to bury or some Easter eggs for the hunt on Sunday. Maybe buy a bunch of books to read in bed like a rebel. There's so much you can do with that cash. Another great game, my HQTs. A good Friday doesn't even begin to describe it. Come find me on Twitter and Instagram in the usual place. That's right here. Let me know how you got on. Request your shout outs for tomorrow. Follow us at HQ Trivia UK as well for even more trivia talk. All right, we're done with the week, but the weekend is only just beginning. Join me back here tomorrow at 9 p.m. for another chance to score 550 quid. Have a wonderful evening, my lovelies. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.